What is up everybody? Shalom and welcome to the Visual Disturbance channel. Today I got a really exciting episode. Uh, it's going to be called the Nephilim Stargate and wow what episode it's getting ready to be. It's gonna, I'm, I'm going to be laying out some things, the ley lines and looking at some stuff maybe that you guys are not aware of but um, we're just going to get into it. So Nephilim Stargates. You've seen some of the things I've done with John Hall and Cutting Edge, etc. You know, ley lines, etc. and all these different things, right? So I'm really stoked to tell you about this. So the other day, last week, I was think I seen something to come across the archaeology standpoint. I'm like, man, what's going on now? You know, so as you all know, there's a lot of droughts, a lot of strange weather phenomenon, all kinds of strange things going on, right? With the weather, droughts, etc. Rain here, super tsunami weather in one side of the states to, you know as far as the united states and then complete droughts in some other countries and out west in the united states there's all kinds of droughts so there was one location that i could not pass up to not make a video on and it's just it just goes along with all the research that i've been kind of looking into the last several years and it's a stonehenge i could not believe it i was like what you know so there's a Stonehenge, and we're getting ready to go there. So y'all, is everybody ready? I'm going to go to Spain, and it's called Dolmen of Cuatro Pearl. Cuatro Pearl, excuse me. Say that ten times. Dolmen of Cuatro Pearl. Now this, and let's get into it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So check this out, everybody. So you all know that I've been, like, all over these ley lines. So, as you can see here, just look at what I'm getting ready to go to. So, we're going to go to Dolmen of Gualtro Pearl. Say that ten times. And we're going to zoom in. So, this marking here, this ancient stone hinge, okay? And you, I'll tell you guys here in a minute what, what the blue line is and what the pink line is, and I'll give you some indication, and I'll tell you what the red line indicates here in a little bit. These are not ley lines, by the way. These are just markers for me to show you this demo, a little demonstrate of uh, doing this presentation, so I'll show you some things. So, this site, let's just get into what they say. So, you know, you've heard about American Stonehenge, you heard about Stonehenge in England, there's all kinds of these megalithic places. But this one, Dolmen of Gualtro Pearl, it, according to academia, according to archaeologists, this place only has, in recorded history, recorded history said that it's, the water is, you know, resided and there's these stones. So the interesting, the interesting thing that when I started looking into it, the interesting thing that really got me is there's been all kinds of documentation and there's been a bunch of speculation and there's all kinds of, you know, folklore stories and stuff about every time the water, you know, went down, there would be bodies. Like, you know, we, we all know, especially when you follow this channel about ritualistic sites, you know, blood sacrifices, all that. But it was just so weird to me that the water would not get you know the water these bodies would just be laying around the stones so what in the world is really going on here right so let's get back into it so let's go to our google earth so i had to look at this guys so let's get into well let's just jump back into it let's get into the uh story of the dolmen of guatro pearl let's look and let's just get into the in, little information so you guys can understand where i'm coming from and we'll read what academia is saying okay and just exclude all the ads, guys. I can't do anything about that in these websites. A Spanish Stonehenge emerges from drought hit, hit dam. And then it kind of gives you the video footage and all the aerial footage of it. And uh, a brutal summer has caused havoc for many in rural Spain. But one unexpected side effect of the country's worst drought in, de in decades has delighted archaeologists. The emergence of the prehistoric stone circle and dam whose water line was receded officially as the Dolmen of Gualtro Pearl, but, but dubbed the Spanish home st or Stonehenge, the circle of dozens of megalithic stones is believed to be dated back to 5000 BC. 
Well, I just did a show the other day on the Calanes stones over in Scotland. Well, isn't it just strange that academia just keeps throwing 5,000 BC around? You can go back and reference that video uh, if you guys want to go. I'll put it. I'll put the link in the description of this video if you guys want to see it. But isn't that just funny that the 5,000, the 5,000, come on now. You just can't make this stuff up. That's my one of my favorite <laughs> sayings. <laughs> Let's get back into it. Okay. It currently sits fully exposed in one corner of uh, Val, uh, let's just say, Valacantan's Reservoir. Can I, I, listen, I butcher words. Just bear with me. <laughs> in the central province of uh, Kakaris, where authorities say the water level has dropped of 28% capacity. It's a surprise. It's a rare opportunity to be able to access, said archaeologists. In, yeah. Let's just go ahead and skip over those words. <laughs> From Madrid's uh, Complutense University, one of the experts racing to study the circle before it gets submerged again. I'm going to pause for a second. Before it emer for What? Before the circle like disappears again? Let's just think about it for a minute. And the solstices and all that, you know, we're getting to what the occult like pay their tribute to with all these other God worship, which in this channel we follow Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only in the Holy Spirit. And I just look at this as I'm exposing it. But I digress and let's just continue on. All right. It was a discovery of German archaeologist Hugo Abramira in nineteen twenty six but the area was flooded in uh, 1963 in rural development project under Francisco Franco's di dictatorship. Um, since then, it has only become fully visible four times. Four times, like I said, in that according to academia, dolmens are vertically arranged stones, usually supporting a flat border. Although there are many scattered across Western Europe, little is known about who erected them. Humans, here we go. Human remains found in or near many have led to an often cited theory that that they are tombs. Local historical and tourist tourist uh, associations have advocated moving the Guatropole stones, Guatropole say it ten times, stones to a museum or elsewhere on dry land. I'm gonna pause here for a second again. Okay. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm just going to sigh for a minute. <laughs> um so what you so what we're looking at here in my opinion is an ancient ley line power source some type of stargate scenario going on here. And these people are studying it and acting like they're worshiping it, paying tribute to the they don't know they say they don't know who erected them. They say they don't know who forged them. But you can come over here into the Americas and you can identify that the stones are of Andaluvian. They are of Nephilim or Raphaim architects. Hello. But they say in these articles, we don't know who erected them. Okay. Let's get back to the article. Um, the pre-sense is also good for Ruben uh, Argens, who owns a small boat tourist business. The dolmen emerges, the dolmen tourist begins. He told Reuters after a busy day spent uh, shuttering tourists to the site and back. But there's no silver lining for the local farmers. You know, it's going on about the the uh, climate change and all that. But I'm not going to get into that because it makes me, it infuriates me. I just wanted to continue on that article. And like I said, I'm getting ready to show you some more articles. Um, so just bear with me because there's all kinds of ads and stuff. And it just, you know... Women's jewelry, women's clothing, and all kinds of weird, strange stuff. So just bear with me, guys. And this article is still talking about the site, okay? I wanted to make sure that I clear, uh, check all my sites off here as far as my all the different websites. Uh, the prehistoric site was flooded by the creation of a reservoir in uh, 1963. So, see, these articles in archaeology, there's so much information. A lot of these different, they're written by different authors, so it's all just... It's a mixed bag of all kinds of stuff. So, several droughts uh, have revealed the Spanish Stonehenge, a remarkable ancient rock formation that's almost always underwater. Almost always. Mm -hmm. And then, 
As Air Europe experiences its worst drought in 500 years, uh, diminished water levels, rural Spain have revealed the dolmen of Guatropearl, and say that 10 times <laughs> in a row, a normal submerged monument known as the Spanish stone, Stonehenge, a historical circle of near, nearly 100 stone megaliths. The site is believed to be dated back to 5000 BC. You know, we're getting, and then it says the dolmen is a prehistoric structure of two or more upright mega, megalithic called menars. I think that's how you say it. With a capstone laid on top, many were used as tombs. And then we can get into the, let's just go ahead and get into it. All of this is uh, according to this angel uh, character. All my life, people had told me about the dolmen. And then the president of, I cannot pronounce that name to save my life. A local culture association told Atlas Oscar, I had seen parts of it peeking out from the water before. But this is the first time that I've seen it in full. It's a spectacular because you can appreciate the entire complex for the first time in decades. The stones, which range in height up to six feet tall, were discovered by German archaeologist Hugo in 1926. They are now underwater. You know, I read that in another article too. But uh, like its more uh, famous UK counterpart, the Spanish Stonehenge has mystery, mysterious origins. Ooh, <laughs> they had to build you up here. Um, these people kill me. They just, just let's just get to the point. And stop building it up. Let's just, let's just cut to the chase and let's just tell you what it really is instead of just beating around the bush. Let's just tell me. <laughs> it may have been an alignment with a summer solstice as a solar temple. Some of the stones feature carvings, including a a menor with a coal a curved line that could represent a snake or a map of nearby Tagus River. I'm going to stop again. <laughs> um, a re a present, a represent, it represents the snake, a map. This is where I, this, you'll, y'all see where I'm going now. Y'all see where I'm going. Y'all see where I'm headed with. Just stay with me. Hoping to capitalize on the current interest in the Gualter Pearl Stones. R yeah, I say that word. I started a change.org petition calling on the government to move the circle to a museum, or at least to dry land. The petition has over 45,000 signatures to date. A number of uh, porous granite stones have fallen or cracked after over a half a century underwater. An ancient monument will only, will only continue to deteriorate once water levels rise, and it sinks back beneath the waves. If we do not act now, Castonio told Spanish news outlet the local, it could be too late. The year is only the fifth time that the water levels, which are currently in a 28% capacity, have fallen low enough to make the ancient side visible. The last time was in 2019. Let that settle in. It's a no surprise. It's a rare opportunity to be able to access it. And they're going on the same same narrative um, that the other article. So, what do you guys think? So, I'm about to take you somewhere. I was gonna add, I was gonna add to it, make another. But let's just not get let's just not get into a boring article. Let's get into something that's actually gonna show me something and show you know I'm gonna show you what I found and be excited about that. Who cares about all the theories and the archaeology standpoint? Is what these guys in academia. I do care about the archaeology. Let me reframe what I just said. But I'm talking about when it comes to just foolish lies and deceit and all this craziness. Let's get into something that actually. Let's just go there. Let's just do it. So let's get back to Google Earth. So, as you guys can see, I have it marked, okay? So, if you go all the way back out, though, so here's the kicker part. If you go all the way back out, check this out. Check out in Portugal and Spain. Now, look. Look at the points. Now, what kind of point is this? It's a pentagon, okay? Think about this, okay? This is a ley line. This is a ley line. These are ley lines, and there's a ley line right dab in the middle, right dead center in the right dead center in the middle. Let me repeat that. Why I got me on on the actual camera? Dead center. So we look at the shape, and it's on it's dead on perfect. The ley lines, oh, hovering over this certain area. But you say you're like, what is that red marking? Brian, what is that? Is that a ley line? No, it is not a ley line. That is not a ley line. 
it's in the middle of a ley line, the marking. I put that marker there. But these ley lines in circumference here, in this pentagon shape, it's going to get just hang tight. Hang time, we'll show you something. This is where it gets interesting. Okay, so this red line here, right? When you go back to Dolman, Dol let me say it 10 times. Dolman of Gotoporo. Dolman of Gotoporo. No, I can't do it. <laughs> okay, so, but wait, there's more. Let me just, I'm going to erase this one. Um, the red line. Let me just make a new one. I'll just make a new one. And I'm going to take you somewhere so you guys can understand what I'm trying to show you guys. Let me go and make another line. This red line was just to show uh, indication of a measurement. As I got you on here, you all can see the measurements. It's kind of small on the, on the screen. I'll show you in a second. It's, it doesn't show up on the Google Earth. Uh, it only shows up on my program, but I'll tell you what it is. So when you scroll over this red line, it's just a marker, by the way, guys. So if anybody's catching the show, go back to the beginning. I'll, I'll tell you what. It's just a marking of my original uh, marker. So, oh, so if you go here, so what do we have here? It's a star fort. And you guys know how I love star forts. So I wish I could show you the, the ruler standpoint. It's not, it's not pulling it up. Um, it's not pulling it up on the screen. But um, the Google Earth is not uh, working correctly. Hang on. Let me see if I can fix it. No problem. There we go. So you can see right here. So I took both lines, a red line, and you can see it's 60. It's almost what was so, I mean, I just had to be in awe about it. I mean, I was in awe. It's 66.85. It's almost 66.6 .6 miles. Okay. I mean, I was not getting, I'm not, I don't get into numbers, but I do take it in research and just say, okay. Let's just put that on the shelf and just think about it. You know, use logical critical critical thinking and really hone in on what we got going on here. The line between the Star Fort and Dolmen of Gautopurl is 66 miles. Um a little bit. Just 66.85. When you split the line, okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's just get back into it. When you split the line, let's go back over. Let's just go back. Those two, if you can see the yellow line there, look how it's almost straight. It's almost a straight line. I changed it to yellow, but it was red a minute ago. The red one's there. You just can't see it. But it's almost a straight line across there, right? How in the world is this even possible? If you take it and split it down the middle, and you just can't make this up, it's literally 33 miles in the middle and 30 it's literally that much that's split in half and it's almost i'm not saying it's exactly accurate you know split off at 33 but i wanted to make that connection obviously 66 you know but what i'm getting at 66 miles across there almost 66.6 .6 is 66.85 but my point is when we're looking at the data here when I'm looking at it, and you obviously, 33 plus 33, what do you get? You know, 66. And if you look from the aerial view, let's get back into it. When you look at the aerial view of it, I mean, look at it. Just look at it. Look at this. Just look at it. <laughs> Would you just look at it? <laughs> and look at the, look at this, look at the shape. Look how all, it's just perfectly shaped. And there's the line. And it's almost a perfectly lined from uh, Dolmen of Gualtro Pearl and the Star Fort. And what in the world is going on here? And you see the black line of another ley line. It's dead center. Look at the perfectness of this. You cannot make this up. So um, we're going to get into it. So I'm sitting here contemplating all this the other night when I looked at it. I said, what is going on? So I was like, I cannot... I cannot, I can't not stop and not just, I can't just stop and put it on, you know, just Brian, I gotta, I gotta keep digging. I gotta keep digging and really dig this out and really hone in on the uh, Dolmen of Guatrapural 
and like see the connection. And I know you can draw a, a line from A to B. I get it. And especially on Google Earth, I get it. But when it comes to an angle, and then you're going to see where I'm going to take you to next, I was like, okay, so it's a Spanish Stonehenge that's in record history, recorded history, four times. That has receded and descended and all that, you know, receded back and all this stuff. And the stones and getting ready for the summer solstice, all this, the summer solstice, all this stuff, right? And this huge worst drought that they ever had. And I started contemplating. I was like, okay, so if I can take the dol- dolmen of Gualter Pearl, say that 10 times, and I go in an angle, and I was like, oh, it can't be. It can't be. And I said, what if it is, Brian? Do it. Just go. So let's do it. I said, surely not. So I went, and I first thing I did, I went to Stonehenge in America. And I was like, this can't be. Let's get into it. I'll show you guys. So here we are. Let's get back into it. So there's the red line that I first made. I wanted to, Before we leave this area, I want you to get a little view of it in a few more seconds of the Pentagon shape. And the red line, almost 33, almost 33 miles this way, the ley line dead center, splits it in half, and there's a star fort here. There's water source on both sides. I forgot to mention that in the, but we'll go, let's just do it real quick. We got time. Look at the water source here. And look, they're talking about the flooding, right? Obviously, this whole section here is going to flood. And it's going to, but what was so strange about it is the the shoreline. You know, I mean, it's right there on the shoreline. But then when you back up and you get into the Starfort uh, st- uh, situation, you're going in, there is water here, obviously. You know, there's rivers and streams, but this is more inland of a Starfort. And uh, cast, uh, Castillo de... Guadalmar. Guadalmar. I am not from I am not from Spain. People say I am. People think I look like Spaniard. I probably do have Spaniard in me, honestly, because I have some family where I had some um, ancestors and stuff from that area. Seriously, but I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's mixed mixed uh, information that I had on family tree way back in the day. So, anyways, continue on. Let's get back into the Google Earth thing. I just want to show you all that before we leave this location. So you see this big, you see this blue line here, right? I have a blue line and I have a, like a, well, it's a highlighted pink. It's like a bright pink one. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. So keep an eye. Here we are, the beginning point. So I want to go to American Stonehenge. The line, I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted to back up here. So the line, if you turn it, it's obviously at an angle. That's how Google Earth is. But here's the line. Just to, let me turn off. Let me turn off all the ley lines, so you, y'all can get to understand what I'm saying here. So all we have is my. I made these on my own, and there's a blue and pink line, okay, coming from Dolmen of Quattro Pearl. Quattro Pearl. <laughs> so continue it on, and look at look at New Hampshire. So we stop, and if you go across the ocean, though, right? Go across the ocean. These two paths almost touch. I mean, there's a there's a pretty good there's a pretty good distance, but I mean, not much. Let me measure that real quick. Let me measure that and get it. Hang on, real quick. Bear with me. Let me measure the measurements just from the distance standpoint because I want to see. Oh yeah, it's like five. It's like five or six miles. The you know the thickness part as far as the uh, the width. Of the probably the width, the you know, that's probably the biggest distancing in the ocean part. But what I'm getting at, there's only a five mile, six mile difference as far as the width and the, the beginning of Dolmen of Quattro Pearl. So we're going across the ocean, right? The pink line is indicating of New Hampshire. So let's stop here for a minute. What is the end? What is at the end of this? Well, and behold, America's Stonehenge. You just can't make this up. So what are we looking at here? right? Unbelievable. Can't make it up. I mean, and wait, there's more. I can just show you. Why not? I want to show you guys something. So when I take a ruler and I look at the distance of here, watch this. Let's go back to, let's go back. I'll make another, I'll make a marker. It's going to be yellow and we'll go back 
we'll go back to uh, Dolman. Uh, where's my indicator at here? There it is. Let's go back and look at the mileage on it. Look at the mileage. Just watch the miles. Now you just can't make it up. If you can see on the screen there, almost 3,300. It's 3,340. It was almost, but I was want to make up, want to make another connection. I'm not trying to give light to the enemy here of any shape or form. Don't, don't hold me to that. That's not what I'm getting at. Don't hold me to that. I'm not trying to throw out symbolism of any kind of sort. I just want to look at the data. And that's all I'm asking, just to look at the data and to acknowledge the data. So, that being said, I just thought it was interesting because, you know, the cultic, the occult likes numerology, likes numbers. So, I just wanted to bring this up about the miles, including the miles between the Starford and uh, Domen of Gualtripurl. So, let's get into it. Let's continue on. So, as you can see, it's 33.4, well, 33, or 3,340 miles, and it darn close to 3,330. I mean, you know, even if it was 3,337, 3,330, I mean, it was dead almost, almost, but I just want to bring that up. So, let's clear this. Let's back up. Let's back up and go to the next one to reveal that I wanted to reveal to you guys. Check this out. So, we're back at Dol Dolman of Gualtre Pearl. Just check this out. So if I go back around and I want to go to another location in America and I go to, let's see here, the Serpent Mound and make sure I, there we go. Check out my blue line. Let me get my map here. I'll turn around. And the blue line, I made it thicker to, because we went from New Hampshire, right? We got New Hampshire with Stonehenge, and then we continue it on. And sure enough, the line, I drew this line. Let's go back to, uh, um, well, let's just go to Stone, or let's go here. Bear with me. All right. Let's just go, let's just go to the end of it. It will show me the Serpent Mound. So I did a map. I wanted to map it out. So there's the Serpent Mound. So the Serpent Mound, if anybody you know, if anybody doesn't know about this, it's actually on my thumbnail or on my uh, logo of my Visual Disturbance channel. But um, I wanted to make a connection. So when I take a ruler and I look at it on here and I say, okay, let's go and look at, let's go back to Dolman of Gualtry Pearl. And at this, in this, section of the uh, of the episode I wasn't really going to get into the mileage standpoint right that wasn't the point I wanted to I wanted to bring light to the uh, let me see I wanted to bring light to the narrative like what I'm exposing here that the alignment is was so interesting about it and we need to dot I wanted to make sure that I, I bring this to light I wanted to make sure and I prayed about it I wanted to see if there's any connection. So when I did it, when I brought it all into it, I was like, okay, so I'm only a little bit off. So the alignment at an angle from this Spanish um, Stonehenge of Dol Dolmen of Gualtry Pearl, and you go at an angle into the Americas, into the U United States, and those mark, it's almost, it's, it's daunting. Like you have to think about it. I'm like, my goodness. And you look at all, you know, summer solstice, all these different things, ley lines and everything. Let's, speaking of ley lines, let's get into it. So there's another thing. One more thing, and then um, we'll continue talking here for a second. Just one moment. Be patient. Um, then go back to Google Earth, and I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go back over to America and check this line out, okay? So it's, you know, it's... Let's see. So I have a green line. I forgot to show you guys this. I wanted to bring this to attention before I uh, end this video. So I tried my best to line it up and make the indication of the, you know, when it ended with Serpent Mound, the historical site. So that's in Ohio for anybody that doesn't know. So it goes back, and then I made a green line because I wanted to continue it on because I was trying to measure out the uh, distancing. 
and I checked, I wanted to check just for fun. I wanted to take it to see that same line, that same line from the beginning of Spain where we was at the, the uh, Dolmen of Gualtier Pearl. And I wanted to show everybody what I, what I, this is, this is my specu- this is me speculating in my theory based on the data that I've looked at. So I want to show you guys this. See this blue, so the blue line is, uh, let me see here. Let me go here. That's the wrong thing. It doesn't, hang on. Let me see here. So this blue line here, right? And the green line. So when I look at the green line here, and I wanted to see how far the distancing. So when you're looking at it, and you see Maysville, Kentucky, and then it's not too far from that. This is this area that I've always thought that there could be a pyramid, and I could not believe it. I just couldn't believe it. So I've always thought, well, you hear you hear about things, about there's pyramids in Kentucky, and this is the area that I got my eye on. It's not too far from the line that I've drawn. The When it goes, goes in and goes through you know, the northern part of Kentucky goes past Louisville, and then I just kind of ended it off because I wanted to see, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, I put this as Mead, Kentucky, which I've done some shows on uh, Mead, Kentucky, with Dan Badoni on the Dan Badoni show. Um, me and him has done uh, a couple, we did a Nephilim, we did a Nephilim um uh, um, it was a Nephilim show about it, giants, etc. And Meade County was one where they found a pretty significant size man. So I wanted to kind of, that was where I was wanting to end off with the show. So just think about it for a minute. You can't make this stuff up. Dolman of Gualte Pearl. This whole thing, they're paying all this they're paying all this interest in it. They're putting all their efforts into it as far as archaeology, scientists, and everything, right? And this Spanish Stonehenge, just out of the blue, through all the droughts, through all the stuff, and boom, at four times in history, supposedly recorded history, and all these narratives, they're spinning. But the data that I just showed today and I'm not boasting. I've been asking the Father to help me with it and just expose things, and I just let the Holy Spirit guide me. This this scenario here is so significant. And I'm on the cusp, but probably I'm going to do a little bit more research into it. I hope you guys understood what I was kind of getting at today with the whole distancing and everything, which is so strange that the numbers are lining up and everything. It's just, to me, it's phenomenal. But I want to see what you guys think. So... In the comments below, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you all are even from, if you if you know some people from Spain, if you know from, if some people know that where this area is, that would be great. I would love to have some data on it, some more insight as far as locals and stuff. That'd be wonderful. But I wanted to expose it. I hope you all enjoy this short video. It's shorter than usually my typical ones. Usually they're two hours long. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully you all um, enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Uh, take notes, um, just kind of get a feel for what is really going on here. Like, think about it. Like, if you're from where, somewhere else in the United States and you live close to you know, Stonehenge, comment in the, you know, comment. If you're from New Hampshire, comment in the box. If you're from Ohio, please comment. If you're from where the Surf Mount is, please, I would like to know you all, see what you all think about. So anyways, oh, real quick, I forgot to show you the ley lines. Man, <laughs> I almost dropped the ball. Let's get back and let's look at the ley lines as far as. Um, now, here's the ley lines, which I thought was oh, really cool. And I've, I've, I've done a show with uh, Cutting Edge of John Hall on this. So here's all the ley lines. And this and it hit right where I'm, it almost hit where Maysville, Kentucky was. It That ley line almost hit. And this is why I've always thought that there was a pyramid. It's kind of in this pyramid shape of these ley lines. So I wanted to bring that to light. That this was dead. It almost hit right in the middle of my research. So I wanted to make sure that I brought that up before I get off here and, and uh, go on about my day. But uh, I wanted to bring that up. And the Stonehenge up here and, um, in New Hampshire, 
so it's not too far either from um from this one was really interesting too because it was almost at a triangle formation also where the Stonehenge was and it kind of almost looked like the mirroring of you know the same same standpoint right here so it's kind of phenomenal just a little little note there but uh, but anyways guys that's the show today I hope everybody enjoyed it uh, like subscribe I really do appreciate the love and support guys I mean I mean that from the bottom of my heart I just words can't describe how I feel about everybody I didn't think that this would I'm at like 550 plus subscribers now uh, I would I was thankful with 10 so I thank you all for uh, staying with me and uh, just believing in me and uh, really I really do appreciate all the love and support so shalom everybody I'm getting ready to pop the intro or the outro so you guys enjoy it and uh, have a blessed day and uh, just just walk that path across thank you for just thank you for listening just follow Jesus Shalom everybody